welcome to a new Harry's Garage video and as you can see we are not in a garage we are at Lotus HQ in Heffel and uh, I've been planning this day for a few weeks now because as many of you know I have ordered a Lotus Amira and it's time I need to do the final spec of the car and I just wanted to see some of the options for real, the actual paint colours and that sort of thing. So I, that's why I've come up here. And Russell Carr, head of Lotus Design, very kindly invited me in to have a look at some of the styling books and things like that in the design studios. So we're not going into the main reception area. In a moment, we're going to go through into uh, Lotus Design. Plan of action today is meet Russell Carr, discuss about design, then I'm uh, going to see if I can wangle a, a passenger ride in one of the mule cars pounding around the circuit at the moment and then we'll go on to the final configurator and I'll put my spec in and I'll be like expectant father because a car will arrive in sort of April time I think we'll find out a bit more on those details I also love how outside Lotus reception look at the cars there's a Lotus Exige and then a very hot Elan that's a well G rated 69 so that's an S3 Elan with 26R headlights and a roll cage just what you want to see hanging outside Lotus reception area anyway let's go and disappear into the design go and meet Russell Carr Wow. Russell, good hey, to see you Harry, again. Good to see you again. How are yeah, you doing? Thank you. Thank you well, for inviting me to your lair where it all happens. Well, so, Welcome to Lotus Design and Studio yeah. 3 where we developed the Amira. And also you can um, see in the back there the Avaya as well. God. This is actually where it happened. This is actually where it happened. Live, live clay modelling here, engineers, designers, fights, all the things you get when yeah. you're developing a vehicle. <laughs> all going on here, but a bit quieter wow. today. Wow, and now it's all done. Gosh, we'll go around everything, I'm sure. I, I'm sort of drawing to a via because it is spectacular. I was lucky to be in London when you took the covers off this. And I just remember seeing it and thinking, wow, Lotus is a complete, going a completely different place here. This is terrific. The, you know, felt so modern, yeah, the electric, etc. But it was the design that took our breath away, I well, think. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. No, well, that yeah. was the intention, was a statement of intent for all the things that follow, Amira and obviously the range of cars after. Yeah. And no better place to start than a hypercar where you're free to really well, express your creativity, basically. Yeah, well, it, it's, I imagine as a designer, it's a gift, isn't it, when you get you know, given a commission it's, like this? It's a dream. We're really lucky. We design sports cars as our everyday job, but a, a yeah. hypercar is something very, very special, you know, yeah. perhaps once in a lifetime. So, yeah, yeah we yeah. reveled in it. Real explosion of creativity, a lot of fun. Can uh, we do rear lights like this? Can we put those enormous holes through the bodywork? You know, like, well, well, I've yeah. been doing it long enough that you have these ideas and you tender them, but you think this yeah. is never going to work, but we'll try. Yeah. And on this car, we were able to we'll do, do, it, do it, so it's phenomenal. Yeah, and no exhaust to worry about or anything like that, you know. No, very diff different opportunities and challenges. Yeah, obviously yeah. the whole layout of the batteries and the motors allowed us to really free up the design yeah. and explore this sculpture of this porosity as our aerodynamics is called it. You design as you love your Well, that's an engineer's words. term actually. Well, I suppose but, uh, it is, with the big <laughs> holes. Yeah. Have you been in it yet? Have you had a go on track? I haven't, it? no. I've got so I'm on the list with Gavin. Is so that what to, happens uh, here? Exactly. God, how important do you have to be here to get a ride with Gav? <laughs> yeah. But what was great is we saw this design and the price point and it's yeah it's marvelous and it's up there but then you did sun the bar and amira yep so amira followed on so what we're looking at here is a, a verification model so uh, the clay you've just looked at for evaya is part of the de early development process yeah. and then we move into data uh, computer surfaces and then we verify it with a verification model and that yeah. allows us to check that everything that we designed the highlights work correctly we don't have any <sighs> funny reflections we can check all the interfaces of the panels for quality and things like that and we even look at things like what we call the gray zone the areas inside uh, when you open the door exactly so, yeah so it's clean easy to wipe down you don't catch your jacket <laughs> you, on you it all think this about that <laughs> well you're going to clean it yeah Oh, yeah, well, we all, we all have those nerdy experiences where we have to get a sponge out and uh, yeah, clean the country. So that. you think about those things now. I was looking back at that uh, Evora video I did, it was a couple of years ago, 
really enjoyed it. That's actually the last sort of new Lotus I've driven. I was surprised I couldn't get into the front of this. Mm -hmm. Is this another car I can't get into the front? You, you can get into the front, but there's just basic services, but we've got a release catch inside uh, the, oh, the car. Oh, sorry, side. actually I've got a release catch here, and then it's a hinging thing. So right. You, but there's no storage in there, it's just basic services. And it's also managing the airflow as well. You know, we, we favoured the top exit radiator duct, oh, which I allows see. us to offset any lift you, you'd normally get putting air underneath the car. So rather right. than putting air under the car, we induct it in the centre here and then we evacuate it on the top. And we've been doing that for years since the Elise, but on this car we've done a different theme, which actually works technically more efficiently, which is really nice. Um, we get uh, yeah, um, better effective in terms of cooling, but with less drag. But it also right. looks much cleaner than having the two big holes on the top of the car. Yeah. Because some cars, they have these sort of nostrils here and it doesn't, I don't think it looks as, this is a very elegant solution, it seems to me, doing this. Well, it fit but with this car because what we were trying to do was do a car that was very sporty, supercar feel, but had a sort of exotic feel, more elegance perhaps than the more raw sporty feel of an Elise, which we all love, but we wanted to do something different on this car. Well, we have to remember how long ago was Elise when that was actually... That's when know, I had uh, hair, was how long ago <laughs> it was. Yeah, it was a while, wasn't it? 95? <laughs> Five, yeah, it? 95, 95 we were working on, yeah, 95, 96. 96 actually at reveal. I had a 340R, so that was one that you did, wasn't it? Yes, that yeah, one? that was the, the first thing that I did when I became sort of manager of the department. Was so it? Was, we started with Julian, uh, yeah. did the early, early concepts, and then I finished it off, so that was a really exciting project. I loved that thing. This yeah. one is definitely about everyday usage. You know, if you, if you just want to use it as transport, it's not going to demand anything from you. You can connect up your phone, you can put your coffee cup yeah. in, all that stuff. But if you well, want to be a track hero yeah. uh, and drive like uh, Gavin, you can yeah. take it on a, on a track and it's going to deliver as well. So it's got a real dual du That's the sort of, yeah, sort of thing that you expect from a Lotus. From my point of view, it's sort of, I have this Lotus Esprit, as you know, and I've took it off to the outs. And what it reminded me that Lotus used to have usability. It was the alternative to the 911. It was the hero car from the UK, and it could outhandle things, mm -hmm. and it was at a much, you know, a price, affordable price point. So it's quite interesting to me that Amira is doing the same sort of thing. You know, it's sort of tackling those big boys because it looks supercar like to me but you packed in this usability which i think is a great return and why i i sort of wimped out and had to order one really because i wanted to use it so fantastic now, yeah. I, that was very much two two sort of phrases we wanted the, the looks of a supercar yeah but everyday usability and obviously affordable attainable car as well which is what lotus has always been through its life you know it's something people can dream of owning yeah. and actually achieve whereas yes. some of the other exotics are just beyond certain people's pockets yeah basically. Was there a big fight over something on this car that you had to be um, quite proud of? I think on, on the exterior, there wasn't a major fight. We, we certainly, with Gavin and the Attributes guys, we talked about wheel sizes and positions. We wanted the front wheels slightly further outboard um, and slightly bigger diameter to give the car better stance as we design as Yes. Use. And better proportions, because obviously you measure the overall proportions of the car by the wheels. It's a reference point use. So it's really important if you want to make the car look low and planted. So we certainly had a discussion with that. But Gavin is a, he's not just you know, a driving dynamics person. He, he loves cars. Yeah. So he understands the importance of that. So he went along with us and found the optimum where you know, he gets what he needs in terms of driving dynamics, but also we get what we want. Probably the bigger fight were some of the small details on the interior. We thought it yeah. was really important on the manual shift that you can see that the gear linkage still. Right. And to do it in a way appropriate for this class of car. Right. Some people didn't get it, some people did, but we've, we've got it as an option anyway. We ought to have a look over here, because that's, I'm guessing, what this drawing here is, isn't it? Yeah, so these are some of the early concept sketches. The solution's very slightly different from this, but. You can see here, rather like we have on the Elise and Exige uh, recently, you can see all the mechanism. And if you're a petrol head, that's just, yeah. just a nice thing. You can't explain why. No. Um, as you can't explain why you buy a sports car. No. But it's something seductive to see the mechanical, the analog side of it. So we wanted to expose this. So we, on the final solution, what we actually have here is we have a, a molded mesh over the top. So OC it stops car. you sticking your fingers right. in there, but it's, um, it also slightly disguises it, but you can still see the majority of it. Funny enough, I don't know if, I, talking to Gordon Murray with his T50 when we did that video, that was all covered up. 
mm -hmm. and then someone saw it on the bench said oh you can't cover that up so and then he realized that uh, Harashi Pagani had done it in the wire yeah. as well so yeah I think we need to celebrate this sort of stuff you know I've, I'm I'm arguing that this type of sports car now and classics will be seen as analog watches we will celebrate the mechanicalness exactly. of the cars as we go to this new era so why not show it off so yeah yeah we're, we're, we're very much we want the car to have soul and you know the, some of these technical elements some of the c controls how they feel are really part of that because yeah. it is a very sensory thing driving a sports car even when you're driving at slow speed you, it, the car needs to give you messages back that put a smile on your face yeah. and that's that's all part of that's it that's all of it yeah was it always going to be v6 or four cylinder did it, when the initially you know the mirror was put out there was it always going to have the two engines or was it I think pretty much from an early stage we're always going yeah. to have two engines because we know in certain markets uh, the V6 is difficult from a tax point of view. We also right. you know, wanted um, different driving characteristics. We wanted the option of people to have DCT. Some people absolutely must have it, some people don't want paddle yeah. shift. So again we wanted to offer a range of things that we could satisfy the traditional enthusiasts but also open up to a wider audience, new audience from other brands. And some people we found buying this car haven't ever had a sports car before. They've just been right. seduced by the way it looks and the promise of the way it drives as well. Yeah. So that, that's what we want really, capturing right. new, new audience. Well, it, it's made ordering tougher because they both have their real <laughs> plus points. They, oh, I don't know. So this is a verification model for the interior. So oh, I see. That's why it's a bit open at the rear, isn't it? <laughs> it's, it's the interior that matters on this, not the exterior. Yeah. But we put enough of the exterior that someone can right. recognise it's the car, basically. I, thought, I looked at this earlier, and there's quite a lot of post-it notes and things on here. There's this, so what happens, is this clinic, and then they, they come in and say, well, that's wrong, and this is wrong, and you've got to do something about this. Basically, yeah, we, we do an audit with people from different departments, design, perceived quality, engineering, manufacturing, yeah. and each person's given a different colour sticker. So right. this is the purple group. <laughs> he was I a can't, troublemaker. <laughs> yeah, I can't remember what the purple group oh, is. Oh, right. Um, I think it was probably uh, perceived quality, and they just highlight things that may be an issue. And obviously what we do then is we go back and we modify the data. Um, or we certainly question whether or not we should be modifying the data. Gosh, how many points did they come up with? 84, I can see yeah. down here. 90. Yes. God, that was a bad day at the office, wasn't it? <laughs> well, they came up with that little lot. Well, what you find is quite a few of them you've already attended to. Oh, okay. And you sort of say, no, we've dealt with that. Um, right. But uh, no, it's a really good thing. You know, we're pooling all the knowledge inside the company to make a better quality product. Yeah. And, you know, that's a restless evolving um, movement we, yeah. you know, each each time we do things we want them to be better quality better functioning right? yeah so you did a via you were well on the way on this journey mm -hmm. on the Emira, I'm guessing at that point aren't you? Um, not totally dissimilar so we showed that in London in summer of 2019 and then we basically did design freeze which is a clay yeah. model stage on the exterior about the same time about oh, September okay. of that year so obviously we'd had time to uh, use this as the basis of development, but yeah. it was a little bit, little bit behind there. Um, so the interior was still being worked on in 19 then? Yeah, exactly. Right. The interior yeah. is a little bit behind the, the exterior for, for right. a mirror. Um, uh, was there a discussion on, I suppose that's on the size of the car, the 2 plus 2, this notional 2 plus 2 Evora? That didn't you decided to make that luggage on this car, didn't you? Yeah, well, we decided to make it because the the space that in the Evora was very, you know, very small. We yeah. hadn't had any real feedback that it was essential. Yeah, and we were looking at the packaging of the two different engines, and right. we kind of needed that space as well. Um, yeah. So what we really concentrated on was making the space behind the seats really usable for for luggage. So we right. wanted to design it that you could put these two decent sized cabin bags behind you, or maybe one suitcase. And then in the, the trunk of the car, the boot of the car, you can also put a cabin bag or yeah. you know, a collection of soft bags as well. Yeah. So again, it was all about usability really, thinking how people are really Absolutely. gonna use this every day. Yeah. Thinking about that just standing here. I mean, one of the things we did a lot of work on was the whole notion of ingress, egress on the car. Um, yes, and what it was a bit of an issue, wasn't it? You know, the Elise was designed for its purpose. It was supposed to be a little racing car that you drive yeah. on the road. But this, you know, you get in and out of it without thinking, and a lot of work went into the positioning of the cat rail, etc. Right. 
A lot of people won't think of that because if you're used to drawing normal saloon cars, you just don't think of that. But obviously, as you drive the height of a car down, right. this all becomes optimised. You could have come out with a convertible first and then it'd been fine, <laughs> see? Yeah, moving swiftly on. So what, and here is just the, the evolution of the design, isn't this, it? These are real working boards in the design process. So you can see computer models. We're looking at different versions of the console and details on there. The evolution of the uh, stick shift for the, um, right. the DCT. Oh, yeah. Um, and here you can obviously see the, the, the seat design. Um, so we're okay. using a frame from a very well-known uh, seat manufacturer inside there and putting our own foams on top of it. Oh, okay. So you can see you know, how tightly packaged this has to be in a sports car. And then we have to fit, obviously, airbags and things like that inside there. Is there a lightweight seat option or you've gone with electric on uh, at this uh, point? Currently we've just got the, the, the one seat in here which comes with yeah. the 12-way adjust um, yeah. and it's been sort of optimised to be two functions, you know, something comfortable but also supportive for sports driving. But uh, yeah. Is that American market, the airbag seats, is that right? The airbag that? is on all, is oh, is on all seats, oh, yeah. Oh, is it? Yeah, this, this is slightly controversial, I thought, because um, it's not a round wheel. That well, we've been around that with the Evora beforehand. So Roger Becker, yeah. who was our ride and handling guru for many, yeah. many years, uh, famously the guy who did the driving in the James Bond film. Yes. Uh, he used to, he used to like, right, remind us about that. Um, we wanted to push something which was a bit flat bottomed to give something which was a bit of modernity. We know a lot of purists prefer a pure round wheel. Yeah. Roger was a big advocate of this. He thought there were benefits in terms of, you know, ingress, egress to the yeah. car. He thought it, it. it had a reference to motorsport, et cetera. Yeah. So, uh, but certainly we do a lot of tuning with people like Gav and our attributes guys, making sure all these transitions are kind of right. So if you ever are feeding the wheel around, you know, in anger when you're sliding the car, yeah. there's never a point where you're just grabbing into to air so i actually quite like it because it makes that bit more vertical mm -hmm. and it's just nicer to hold if you do a round you're more canted over i find it better so i'm i'm surprised myself it's like the aston wheel you want to hate it and then you try it and it actually works quite well well the other thing is as well with this this sort of picture window and the shape of it yes we obviously have to work these days with tft screens yes. which typically you know are quite large rectangles yes. so if you do a pure round wheel you just get um as we call it rim block yes. of a lot of the screen so you lose a lot of it so uh, are you tempted with head up display or do you think you still need instruments not not on this this car yeah. but it's certainly something we're considering yeah. on future products <sighs> What else? Right, what else is there to see? They're the seats. I'm in a slight rush because there's a car. I can't believe it, but Dan Peck has promised to go round track. And I just well, that's feel, what it's all about. Yes, and that's what I'm actually meant to be doing now. So, Russell, thanks for that. We're going to see you later, I think, and just, yeah, configure up a car. See what we're Fantastic. Going to do. Good. Good. Good right. to show you the stuff. Thank you. See you in a bit. Spree S1, I am deeply jealous. Charlie, I don't know if you want to come in. Have a look at that interior. Ah, oh dear. 1975, 76, that one. And then this, an elite. This was their lux, this was Lotus's luxury car. Um, so front engine, two plus two, but proper seats in that. But what I'm going to go in is this test, the mirror. And this is Dan Peck in here. He's going to take me out in the mirror. It's my first go in the mirror. Thank you for your patience, Dan. No, no problem. Yeah. So you, this is your day job, isn't it? This, this is, is driving I'm development. Yep, I'm a vehicle you. dynamics engineer. And this is your specialist subject, if it there, is, is, yes, is a yes. mirror. So we've been tuning this for the last two years in disguise, and here we are, we have the VP yeah. car. Yeah. Shall we go onto the track? Well, why not? But how much do you do on-road and on-track thing? When so, like, like the mirror, it's a road car. Yeah. So we predominantly do all the dynamic tuning on the road. We use the track for limit handling behavior. Yeah. And just general high speed, high aero, high load type performance driving. Well, it must be an absolute gift to have a track just there, oh, isn't it? As you can see, we're yeah. 30 seconds away. <laughs> it's ridiculous. <laughs> Straight onto the circuit. Yeah. And how close to, 
I mean, being a development car, is there things on here that aren't quite standard, or is this pretty? It's it's there's a well, it's a verification prototype. So there's there's a lot of um, production parts, but as you can see, there's quite a few little pieces missing. Um, but dynamically, suspension, steering, springs, dampers, roll bars—they are they're still ongoing tuning, but they are right. versions of the production. Tiny bits of trim, like around the steering column, yeah. things like that, missing. And you're saying these seats aren't quite the not quite the right. Deal. They're, they're obviously the right shape and right design. How many miles has this car done? This car is not very old, it's only done about 1300 miles, but oh, quite hard miles. Right. <laughs> Anyone clear of the barrier, thank you. God, this is so different. I've driven it. I haven't been out here since you've resurfaced and done everything. Oh, really? It was a long, oh, while ago. A long time ago when I used to do sprints. I remember doing an early one with Jeff Rowe round here. Okay. Um, there was a turning circle or something down here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, that's. Uh, sorry, a, a steering pad. Steering yeah, pad, yeah. that's the word. Yeah. Yeah, no, we. That's long gone. We have our own dynamic pad now, which we're seeing in, in a minute. Yeah. How many laps around here for you, Dan? Oh. Hundreds, oh, thousands, thousands. Of them. That wasn't you, those brake uh, lights going no, straight that, off the barrier that, that there. That wasn't me. No. A lot of these tyre marks, this is me. Uh, yeah. yeah. No, I was out here this morning in the, we have an Amira GT4 mill car. Oh, right. So we're out here this morning doing some shakedown runs. Oh, do we just do a kind yeah. of a slow lap? Just a well, yeah, I'm just, when we initially just coming out of the car park, it actually felt as though it rode better than me because this is the small setup. This is the like now you can just feel even on the circuit there's a small amount of well it's it's breathing it's yeah. not yeah it's not super stiff no it's not gt3 rs it's no 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 at all. but the car still has all the agility and as you expect with yeah. a lotus with a lovely steering build up on it
quave torsen dip. Oh, it is dip. a quave. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. Not a metronic dip, but that's no, all. No, it's mechanical. a fully mechanical yeah. torsen differential. Enjoy that a few laps round Heffel's famous test track. I can't get over that ride. That's what I've just taken away from that. Is that road way better than I was expecting? Even though we were you know, going pretty quick round there, and the Cup Two delivering their amount of grip. It's really windy now. I've got to go into the configuration suite now and just decide the final spec of this car. So how did that go? Well, it was good. It was good. Um, it's it's confused me slightly because it was that was sports suspension i thought oh flip and yet it didn't feel uber sporty it didn't feel silly firm and uh, it was mega on track sounded great so i'm very happy with the v6 idea and uh yeah I, and on the color things well obviously that car was absolutely no help whatsoever <laughs> for its multicolors. i'm not gonna have it like that but uh, you sort of made life easy and hard by having such a tight restriction number of paint options haven't you yeah, well, it's easy for the customer, but difficult <laughs> for us because we had to filter it down to oh. six. But it's part of the process, new factory, new paint facility, all that. We had to keep it focused. Very but, tight. Yeah. But a good range of colours here anyway. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's three I would have no problem. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so I, I'm, I'm choosing between the metallics. What, I, what gets me about this Lotus, this mirror yeah. here, 
this is quite a sophisticated looking lotus. This isn't, you know, and, and at least always is a bit of a toy or an disease. This is quite serious. If you get it in a metallic color, if you took the badge off, you said it's McLaren, everyone would believe you. Mm -hmm. And that's what I really like about this. So I want, I want to give it an air, an air of sophistication. I say for my Esprit, that's what I liked about it. It was a usable car. And I'm quite proud yeah. of those Rosario designed car. And I'm quite proud of this as well. So I'm going with Tay. I think I'm, I think is it Nimbus Grey, I think is. So that's this one here. This one. So a, a, a silver, I've always liked Ferrari in silver. It's not mm -hmm. often you see, because it was always red. I've not seen very many silver mm -hmm. Lotus, but it's a sort of Germanic color, but it also with a shapely car, it's, it, the highlights really can Well, you can paint. see it on this paint form here, how yeah. it can, we, we talk about travel which is another right. designer phrase. Yeah. But the, the way it goes from very light to dark on the surface there, and you can see how it picks up the highlights. Yeah. So it really punches out the form on the car. Good. So, I mean, that's, that's a, that is a great color. Have obviously. you seen an Amira in this car? I haven't, but I'm sure we've got one of the many prototypes is in that, so. Right, yeah. You think they're all great cars though, that's <laughs> the trouble. But then on the configuration, I've got to choose, this has got black pack on it, hasn't it? This is the yep. black roof. And I know from Ferrari, I remember um, guys at Pinaferina telling me they wanted to do this on the Enzo. Mm -hmm. um, they had to rule it out because of potential damage to the paint and they got it on La Ferrari. So they, Ferrari have a habit of doing this. This is, what's the, what's the design reason for doing that? The argument would be on doing that, that it kind of unifies all the glass house and makes okay. the car look a bit lower. It makes it look more like a canopy. So right. some days you look at it and you go, well, this is the advance. This is the way to go. It makes the car look lower. <laughs> Other days you come in and you see one which has got a body color roof and you go, well, well I'm seeing the complete volume of the, the car shape. now yeah. go that way. So you're asking the wrong person because a, a designer very rarely stays with the same opinion for a very long right. you know, That's yeah. by the nature of it. So uh, Well, maybe I ought to become a designer because <laughs> I'm, I'm the same. Yeah, I think I want to show off the engine and the interior. So I think I'm going body color there. Yeah. Because then you'll see the glass and you'll look into the engine more if it's yeah. silver car and then suddenly it's, oh, what's this Lotus engine? Yeah, and of course, what we're looking at here is we're looking at a mock-up of the four-cylinder car, yes. but on the V6, you've got a very minimal cover around the engine and you it's celebrate- It's mechanical. Yeah. yeah, you celebrate all that side of things. Okay. What I'm not sure is then I get color coded on the Venturi and the sills, don't mm. I? You can have a lower black pack oh, um, in you? there. So you've got, uh, oh, all okay. these areas are uh, black on the car. Oh, okay. Um, oh, and I'll then the one that. on the top with the mirrors is the, is the second part oh, of the pack. Oh, okay. So oh, that's, I can do what, that, that's what I do mm. then. I do lower black, Nimbus gray, Nimbus gray roof. We're getting there. Silver wheels, I love the um, simple wheel rather than a yep. dual tone, I think. We always have this debate because dark wheels look more moody, more racy. Yeah. Silver wheels make the wheels look bigger, so they're yeah. kind of good for different reasons. So. Uh, and if you've got a good designed wheel, I think it helps. I'm not sure about the two tone. I, it, it, I don't know why. I just get slightly. I think it would be better all silver all the way around. But there we go. Well, if you've seen the uh, car, the dynamic car that was at Goodwood that had silver wheels on, yeah. albeit they're on the cast wheel design. And they look really strong. They look, yeah. you know, make, look big, look, make the car look very agile. And weirdly, calipers are a thing, coloured calipers, yeah. aren't they? Uh, can you, you can do silver calipers, can you? You can do silver, you can do black, you can right. uh, do red in there as well. Okay, so silver, that's fine. I'll go silver, silver body, well, Nimbus grey, silver calipers. There's just the interior to go then. Mm -hmm. So you've got obviously two basic choices of material to start with. Right. You can go Alcantara, which you have the choice of black, and then you can have a contrast stitch. Oh, okay. Or you've got the four choices of leather in here. So very traditional black leather. Tan, which obviously um, is a very popular yeah. color um, in all brands of cars. Um, the red. And, uh, and that's a pretty nice vibrant red, isn't it? That's not a. That's a pretty vibrant red, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Good choice. So, and I can imagine you're doing a bit of tan with green going We've on. We've had a lot of people say that, yeah. Yeah. And obviously the red works with the green as well. And can I do the centre of the seat in a different? If I went Alcantara, can I have a different colour in the panel in the middle, or can't think? The Alcantara is all dark. I mean, it's basically configured like this one. What you do, the contrast you get 
is um, on the stitch. Okay. So you've got a mixture of leather and alcantara. Oh, I see. So that's the that's the alcantara. That is the alcantara like interior. Okay. So you can uh, obviously yellow stitch on here, red stitch, grey stitch on there as okay. well. Okay. So alcantara. I'm a big fan of alcantara. I think it suits the seats. It's grippy grey, as well. Yeah. So. Grey, grey stitch. I think that's the end of the decisions, isn't it? That's wasn't so difficult. No, it wasn't. wasn't. No, no. Oh, and sports. I think I'm going to go surprising myself and go sports suspension or setup or was it called sports suspension yeah yeah save deposit oh god that's there you it. go so there we are do a screenshot of that and you get your spec on your phone i've got a car well, well done congratulations oh, thank sir. you very much ah. thank you for the guidance so yeah how long have i got to wait <laughs> I'm not sure. It's going no. to be early part of next year, basically. Right. Early part. So that's not long, is it? Just met with Matt, who's MD of Lotus, and he's saying they're painting the cars, aren't you? You mm. actually, yeah, the cars are underway on the production facility over there. We've, we've got exciting. robots working on that now, yeah. Have you? Good. Well, thanks ever so much, Russell. That wasn't Excellent. too painful. <laughs> Excellent stuff. Good. Well, that was terrific to be part of that and get Russell to actually guide me through the car and actually going out in it on track and hearing it wasn't quite as vocal as that Evora GT410 was, but it was plenty vocal enough. That's the gas particulate filters for you. But yeah, it just feels great to be part of Lotus, buying a Lotus as this brand sort of reinvents itself. And, uh, you know, I've seen the Evora and then the Amira and who knows what's coming next. So yeah, really chuffed with that. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you have, well, keep watching, keep subscribing, more videos coming on very soon.